Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 28th of March. Delhi Court extends remand of CM Kejriwal in excise policy case. India and China agree to discuss disengagement in border areas amid border tensions. And activists urge you and Richard to investigate rights violations in Balochistan. And now for all the details. The Delhi High Court on Thursday extended the remand of Delhi's Chief Minister and AAP convener Arvind Kejriwal until April 1st after the Enforcement Directorate pleaded that they required his further custodial interrogation to confront him with some other people in a graft case. Kejriwal was produced in the court by the ED where he told reporters that the motive of the agency is to crush his party and pointed out that people are being turned a prover in the case and they are being forced to change their statements. The court, however, rejected a PIL seeking Kejriwal's removal as Chief Minister of Delhi. Kejriwal, a key opposition leader whose party has governed the National Capital Territory for a decade, was arrested last week on corruption charges relating to the city's liquor policy, weeks before India begins voting in general elections on April 19th. His arrest has sparked protests in the National Capital and nearby northern state of Punjab, which is also governed by AAP. And amid border tensions, India and China on Wednesday agreed to continue talks through diplomatic and military channels to resolve border issues along the line of actual control. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaswal in a statement said that the talks were undertaken under the framework of working mechanism for consultation and coordination on India-China border affairs in Beijing. This was the 29th meeting of WMCC. The ministry further said that both the sides agreed on the need to uphold peace and tranquility on the ground in the border areas in accordance with existing bilateral agreements and protocols. Meanwhile, New Delhi rejected the absurd claims and baseless arguments made by China on Arunachal Pradesh asserting that the northeastern state is an integral and inalienable part of India. Moving on, political activist Professor Sajjad Raja has raised concern over worsening conditions in POK and Gilgit Baltistan in contrast to Indian territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, which are witnessing rapid progress. A report. Professor Sajjad Raja, the chairman of National Equality Party for Jammu Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan and Ladakh, made a striking comparison shedding light on the worsening living conditions in POK and Gilgit Baltistan in contrast to Indian territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Professor Raja emphasized the vast chasm in development facilities, infrastructure and law and order between the two regions, lamenting the dire situation faced by the inhabitants of POK and Gilgit Baltistan. He expressed grave concerns over the lack of basic amenities such as roads, hospitals and education facilities in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. We are living like animal life. We are living like animals. Pakistan treats us like animals. We don't have any... Can you imagine? Can you imagine? There is not even a single hospital in whole of POJK and Gilgit Baltistan. For very basic treatment, people are referred to Rawalpindi, Islamabad and Lahore. There is no la laboratory at all to do basic blood tests. So we have got nothing, no railway at all. Uh, people are forced to build their own roads. Professor Raja further revealed the distressing reality of forced migration in the occupied territories where individuals are compelled to sell their land and assets for reduction to various parts of the world in absence of employment opportunities and economic activities. Meanwhile, Baloch activists on Wednesday urged the UN to investigate rights violations in Balochistan raising concern over a rise in cases of enforced disappearances 
and extrajudicial killings. A report. Amid the rise in cases of enforced disappearances in Pakistan, the Baloch Human Rights Council held an event on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva and urged the world body to dispatch a fact-finding mission to investigate rights violations in Balochistan. The activist raised concern that Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations and enforced disappearances by the Pakistani state and its army, while it continues to exploit their natural resources. So we discussed that despite being a signatory of various human rights instruments and conventions, Pakistan continues to violate uh, the rights of the oppressed nations uh, uh, under its uh, control. Uh, with impunity and uh, without any accountability. Uh, and uh, we also uh, discussed that uh, uh, about the human rights situation in Balochistan, that there has been an alarming increase in number of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Balochistan. Activists allege that Pakistan repeatedly carries out such atrocities to instill fear and exert control over the Baloch people who have been demanding independence from its occupation. The Baloch does not want to live with Pakistan anymore. We want the Pakistan army out of Balochistan. Pakistan cannot feed this huge army. They want to loot and plunder our goal to survive. We will see that we're going to stop all that. In the wake of the recent surge in terror activities across Pakistan, Defense Minister Khwaja Asif has pointed fingers at neighboring Afghanistan, labeling it as the primary source of terrorism within the country. Taking to X, Khwaja Asif called for further tightening of border controls to mitigate the threat. The comments came against the backdrop of a string of attacks in recent days, including the suicide attack on Chinese engineers in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and a naval base in Balochistan. Since November last year, Pakistan has required that all Afghan citizens must possess a valid passport and visa to enter the country. It also sent back thousands of undocumented Afghans living in Pakistan since decades citing security concerns. However, it remains unclear which new measures the minister was referring to. Sri Lanka and China on Wednesday agreed to continue to act under the friendship, peace, mutual respect and fivefold principle in international affairs that do not interfere in each other's internal affairs during a meeting between Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana and Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Xi Jinping said China firmly supports Sri Lanka's efforts in achieving national unity, stability and independent economic development and stands ready to work to advance the implementation of important projects within the framework of the Belt and Road Initiative. The Chinese assurance comes days after IMF, which concluded its second review of the $2.9 billion bailout to Sri Lanka, said that reaching an agreement with the country's commercial creditors, international bondholders and China Development Bank was the key to achieving debt sustainability. The picturesque Dal Lake in India's Jammu and Kashmir has long been synonymous with the vibrant houseboats which have continued to attract tourists from across the globe. Each houseboat exudes timeless charm and hospitality with intricate woodwork and vibrant Kashmiri carpets and luxurious furnishings. They are iconic symbols of Kashmir's serene beauty and unique lifestyle. These floating dwellings offer a tranquil retreat on the picturesque Dal Lake, Nagin Lake and also the Jhelum River. तक पहुंचा है एक हाउस बोट में रहना भी एक बहुत यूनिक एक्सपीरियंस रहा हमारे लिए बहुत ही ज़्यादा क्लीन था फूड भी अच्छा था शिकारा राइड भी काफ़ी अच्छा है जिस तरह की आप यहाँ पर देख रहे हैं कि डल लेक के अंदर ही काफ़ी सारा मूविंग शॉप्स भी है दिस इज़ आल्सो वेरी यूनिक थिंग दैट वी कैन सी इन इंडिया तो काफ़ी अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस लग रहा है वेदर भी बहुत अच्छा है इस समय विजिटर्स एक्सपीरियंस द एलियोर ऑफ कश्मीरी कल्चर वाइल इंजॉइंग मॉडर्न एम्यूनिटीज they also enjoy the enchanting views of snow-capped mountains and shimmering water right from the deck. The gentle lapping of waves against the houseboat creates a soothing ambience, perfect for relaxation and introspection. 
और मेरा भी एक ड्रीम था कश्मीर आना डल लेक में हाउस बोट में रुकना जो कि मेरा ड्रीम यहाँ के कंप्लीट हो चुका है और इट्स सच अ वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल प्लेस और यहाँ पर जो शिकारा राइड है शिकारा राइड अभी हम करेंगे यहाँ के जो राइड्स है ये बहुत ज़्यादा ही सुंदर है और यहाँ पे जो हाउस बोट पूरा ही माउंटेन से कवर है जो कि बहुत एक ब्यूटीफुल व्यू है यहाँ का Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.